Hi, everyone. I'm Angela with Fernley and Trowbridge, and today I'm going to talk to you about needles and thread. A lot of you have asked me, what needle do I use? What thread do I use? I'm confused. I don't know how to shop for it, etc. So I hope with my information dump here that I will give you a little bit of understanding of how to go about choosing your thread and choosing your needles. So I'm going to start with thread and I'm going to start with linen. Linen by far is the most common thread that you see in the 18th century. You find it on linen fabric. You find it as a construction thread for wool fabric and silk fabric. And you sometimes find it on cotton because of course, they haven't mercerized cotton yet, so there isn't cotton thread. The one thing that's a little confusing is the number system. I'm going to take you through what you're looking for. There are two numbers that you will see when you go shopping for thread. That first number will be the size of the thread, and then there'll be a slash mark, and the second number will be the number of plies. So that's how many threads that have been put together to make up this one thread. So size-wise, if you look at a very small number, you're looking at a very thick thread. If it's a very high number, it's a thin thread. So to go through our inventory, I'll start with our 18 over 3, which is our heaviest thread. This is a thread that's used for cording buttonholes. It's used for heavy construction. So you'll find heavy thread like this, for example, in extant men's broadcloth coats, holding together pleats um, and various things like that, tacking down things. The next one would be our 30 over three. This again is a fairly heavy thread. This could be used for linen buttonholes. So for example, in a man's shirt, they would be acceptable for that. It also is a good construction um, thread for heavier fabric. So broadcloth, doing seams in broadcloth can be done with a 30 over three. The next would be our 50 over three. Now the 50 over three is a little more general purpose, but it is a stouter thread. This thread is gonna be good for things like medium weight linens, canvas weight linens, some of your medium weight wools, etc. This is a good uh, multi-purpose if you like using longer lengths of thread because it won't break as easily, but it is a little bit chunky. Um, the equivalent of that is that we have as well is the 35 over two. Now I know there's a difference, the 50 over three, 35 over two, how are they the same? Well, they're the same because one is a three ply and one is a two ply. So the diameter of the thread, although you have those two different numbers, is really virtually the same. So with the 50 over three or the 35 over two, you've got a good sturdy thread that's multi-purpose. Going up from there, we get to our 80 over three and our 60 over two. Again, it's the same thing, where in a, the diameter of the thread is virtually the same. One is a three ply, one is a two ply. These, to me, are all purpose. I like these two threads the most, and they're usually the ones I recommend to people the most. These threads are good for medium to lightweight fabrics, um, not so good with a heavy broadcloth. Again, you want one of the heavier threads. But beyond that, most fabrics that you may be sewing with, it'd be perfectly acceptable to use either one of these threads. Going up from there, you have really fine linens or a cotton mole, something like that. I would recommend going to your 100 over 3 or your 80 over 2. Again, same diameter. These are a much finer thread and will allow you to make finer stitches. So that is our linen thread. You don't want to forget your beeswax. And I know I've had people say, why do I have to wax it all the time? You have to wax it because linen thread has little fuzzies. And as you pull it through the fabric, it creates friction. The more you pull it through the fabric, the more the friction, and slowly the thread will start to break down. So to preserve your, your thread and your sanity, I would suggest always waxing. 
So let's move on to silk. Silk thread is being used with wool fabric and with silk fabric. I don't think I've seen silk being used with linen ever, nor with cotton. The exemption to that is when you see it being used for embroidery work. Otherwise, it's not. So think wool, think silk, think silk thread. We carry three types of silk thread. The first one that we carry is really a modern uh, thread. It's thinner than anything that I think you would find in the 18th century. It's a number 50, but we have a lot of people who ask, can they put it on their sewing machine? And this is suitable for sewing machine. And let me go backwards for a minute. None of the linen threads are. Please never put linen thread on your sewing machine because you will be at the sewing machine repair shop afterwards. Silk thread, this silk, silk thread, the number 50, can be used on your machine and you can use it for regular sewing. It's very fine, so it can be used for sewing on, uh, you know, lightweight silk, the loot strings, the gauzes, that sort of thing. So we have regular sewing silk and then we have the extra fine, which is really suitable for, for example, our silk gauze. It's beautiful for that. The other two silk threads that we carry and that are used commonly in the 18th century go by denier. So if you don't know what denier is, one denier is basically one silk filament and that's how silk is measured. And then it's done on like it's a 9,000 dimension and it's a weight and et cetera, et cetera. But what you care about is that we have two different deniers the first one is what we call our quilting weight, and this is a 600 denier. This thread is really about the diameter of the threads that I see frequently being used in construction for silk clothing and wool clothing. So you see it in gowns, you see it in men's suits. Um, and the other one is our Thousand. Now, the thousand we call buttonhole twist, and it is. It is the weight that you would see being used for buttonholes. Likewise, the quilting can also be used for buttonholes. What I suggest is that if you are just starting to make buttonholes, you definitely want to use our buttonhole twist. Once you become very proficient, you can go down to our quilters because it's gonna take you longer to make your buttonhole and you're gonna to have to do a finer stitch. So that's our silk thread. We also recently added one more thread that is contemporary. It's not really 18th century, but it's wonderful. And it is perfect for some of our really fine cotton mulls. And that is our fine cotton number 80 thread. So you might be wondering why we carry the cotton thread. This is, was a decision that we made based on the fact that if you go back and look at extant garments, some of the really fine, fine cotton and linen garments that you see, they are sewn with a very fine linen thread. We have not been able to find something that fine. But when we found this cotton, we thought that it simulated it very well and therefore we added it to our inventory. So that takes you through all of our threads. So let's go on to needles. Many of you have bought our giant multi-pack. So if you have, yay for you, because you can experiment with all of them and decide what is your favorite needle. But to go back to buying a needle, they do come in sizes. Now, again, like thread, if it's a low number, it's a thick, heavy needle. If it's a high number, it's a thin needle. So if you look at, say, for example, a three or four or maybe five, those would be your heavier needles that would be used for heavy fabrics. Going from five to 10 would be your medium to light needles that would be used for medium to light fabrics. 11 and 12, you're getting into very, very fine needles that are used for really fine sewing on very light fabrics. Along with these sizes, there are also types of needles. Now, the most multi-purpose needle there is is a sharp. 
And we do carry a variety of sharps. We carry some variety packs so that you can go and have some choices. But if you like something other than that, there are different types of needles that you can use for different purposes. We have regular eye needles. We also have some larger eye needles. So our three through nines right now, we have an irregular eye and we also have an, a larger eye. I personally choose anything with a larger eye because linen thread sometimes is really hard to thread. So as an example, if you were going to use something like our 30 over three, I would definitely go with a large eye sharp and I would probably use mm, maybe my four of my large eye needles because the thread's so thick, it's got to be able to get through the eye. But we do carry this in a regular eye and in a big eye. We also carry a five through 10 in sharps. So it's your preference. One of the things I want to say straight up is that needles are personal. I have needles I use all the time. I love my 10 sharps for most of my sewing. I can use my 10 for almost anything that I want to do. However, sometimes I need to use this next type of needle, which is a between. And this is a short needle. They also call them quilting needles because it's easier to get a nice, even, small running stitch with a short needle like this. It's also great for things like whip stitching, uh, small, repetitive stitching. In-betweens can be really good. Um, again, we carry these only in a 10. Maybe I'm, I have a lot of 10s <laughs> in my collection, mainly because I like them. But 10 seems to work for a wide variety of fabrics. The next thing would be a cruel needle. Now, a cruel needle tends to have a elongated eye, which makes it easier to thread. It's about the length of a sharp. So you've got that. And it seems to, so if, for example, you can't get a big eye, you could choose a cruel when you can't find a big eye and you'll get that larger eye. The final one would be our milliner needle. Now this one has a small eye, I will warn you ahead of time, but it's an extra long needle and it's really lovely to use for fine sewing. It is a sensitive needle, it will bend easily, but I know people that are kind of proud of the way their needles have bent to the way they sew, and they literally will hang onto those needles until they break in half. So that gives you your basic sizes of needles. If you've never really played with sizes before, buy one of our variety packs or get it elsewhere, your choice, um, but get something that will allow you to have some variety and allow you to work with different fabrics. So finally, let's pair our needles with our thread, with our fabric. If you go by the basic idea that you want to match your thread to the weight of your fabric, that will get you on the right path. So for example, a very heavy fabric needs a heavier thread, it needs a stouter thread. Therefore, it's gonna need a stouter needle. A very fine fabric is going to need a very fine thread and therefore a finer needle. One caveat to that is I have found that I can sometimes use a lighter weight needle on heavier fabrics, that it works well for me. It depends on how easily the needle can travel through the fabric. So if you're not sure, again, get yourself a variety of sizes so you can experiment until you get the size needle that works well with your fabric. The final thing I wanna say is think quality. We carry a French needle, it's called Bowen. It's made in France and it is an extremely well-made and smooth needle. If you look at your average needle that you get in your average fabric store, under a microscope, you will see barbs on it. You will not find barbs on a nice quality needle like this. And I know that everybody tells you this, and I'll tell you this as well. We're only as good as our tools, so the better your tools, the better the quality of sewing you will do. I hope this has helped you. 
I hope it's dispelled some of your concerns and confusion about needles and thread. And I hope you continue to watch our channel. And if you haven't, please be sure to subscribe. See you next time.